Millions watched her get ambushed on camera. I really think that they were trying to kill me. These would-be robbers in Atlanta thought that they had the right one, but little did the alleged criminals know their victims were packing. The gun is the equalizer. You got two women walking in a stairwell case, and little do they know, the robbers that think they have a drop on her, eh, quite the contrary. She kind of had to drop on them a little bit. Um, and what equalized that situation for her was the fact that she had a firearm. That situation, if she didn't have a gun, would end a lot differently, if you ask me. That both of them were coming home from the bar and noticed two women with face masks walking towards their front gate. She says that those women were ahead, though, walked up the stairs, then disappeared out of view. Alexandra says, though, she had a gut feeling and pulled out her gun. If I were in that situation and I saw two women wearing masks, I be I don't think I would actually consider them to be much of a threat. I don't know what that says about me, but I, I do now realize that I probably should not take on that type of mentality considering what happened in this particular case. And then another thing too that I realized and I want to point out too that has gone back and forth in my mind as well, notice that he mentioned they went to a bar and were walking back. So like here in Texas, there are certain places that you can carry a gun, certain places that you can't. In Texas, if it's a 51% sign, you can't carry a firearm in there, whether you're drinking or not. Um, and I've always had a problem with that. And the reason why I had a problem with that is because you never really, it kind of limits what you can do with respect to carrying a firearm, defending yourself, and then kind of going about living life. I think the idea of it doesn't factor in I have to walk back to where I've come from, especially if I didn't if I didn't drive. So if I leave my place, walk to a bar or walk to an establishment that bans me from having a firearm, at some point I'm gonna have to walk back. And it doesn't, and these laws don't account for that reality. What happens? How do I protect myself on the walk back and the walk there? Sure, you can make the argument there are no guns allowed here. We have uh, metal detectors, we have security, we have everything here to prevent anybody from bringing a gun in here. That's great. I'm protected in the establishment. What about when I'm walking back home? That's the thing. So when we start talking about some of these laws, we got to understand what is the inherent purpose of the law? The inherent purpose of the law is to keep you safe. It's one thing to say you can't carry a gun if you're drinking. Cool. It's another thing to say you simply can't carry a gun because they serve alcohol here, which is the case in a lot of states. So I'm always going to have a problem with that. And as you can see here, I'm not exactly sure what the laws are in Atlanta. Don't want to incriminate her one way or the other. But however, I will say... If she hadn't brought her firearm with her, she would not have been able to defend herself in this situation on her walk back home. When they seen us walking up, they got out their car and started walking towards the door too. The ring footage has gone viral. It was around 9 p.m. You can see the two people with masks skulk up the steps of the apartment complex then out of view in the Mechanicsville section of Atlanta. Alexander says that she and her friend were not far behind them. So they mask was kind of like turned a little bit. So I'm like, okay, hold on. So I'm like, where did them girls go? Who who are them? Who are they? Like, so that's why I had looked back, like going up. Like, I didn't hear no doors open. It was quiet because we we the only ones out there. So I'm looking around, like, I don't know where did where did they go? They didn't go downstairs, they went up. So the interesting thing about this is some people would see this video and think, man, that gun saved her. And to some degree it did, but it really didn't. What saved her was herself. What saved her was her situational awareness. And I, and I talk about that a lot, the idea that simply having a gun doesn't make you safe. I'm never gonna espouse that idea. It can help make you safe better, but it doesn't automatically make you safe. What makes you safe is having the ability to be situationally aware of what's going on. Because if you can't get to the gun to use it to protect yourself, to make yourself safe, it doesn't matter. Because if they get the drop on you, not much you can do there. So. Always keep that in mind is that situation awareness above everything else is probably going to be the most important thing when it comes to keeping you safe. Now, situational awareness kind of means nothing if you find yourself in a situation like this and there's not much that you can do to defend yourself. You're in a in tightly enclosed space. There's not really anywhere to exit. So at that point, you have no choice but to fight back. And so that's where the gun comes into play, giving her the advantage or equalizing the situation so that she can fight back to protect herself. But above all else, the thing that saved her here was her intuition, or as we like to say in the gun community, her situational awareness. You can see Alexander in the black hoodie. She quickly turns around. And if you zoom in, she had her nine millimeter pistol in hand loaded and ready.
we got to my friend door, but my friend was walking faster than me. So I start speeding up to walk like, you know, because I felt something. Now, as I kind of dug into this story a little bit more and read some comments and things like that, um, there's some murmurings that her friend may or may not have set her up. I don't know. It's just kind of people speculating and guessing just based on the way that the friend was acting. And, you know, the mere fact that there's some information going around that the friend didn't even drink when they were at the bar, so forth and so on. However, but let's let's not factor that aspect into it in this particular situation and just kind of look at the way that the friend acted and in the way that she acted. You can look at the friend and you can see her. she's not really paying much much attention to what's going on. So let's say you remove the, uh, the lady here who actually used her firearm to protect herself. Let's say she wasn't in the picture and the friend was the one by herself walking back and these two people were trying to rob her, attack her, kill her, whatever the case may be. She's not paying attention. And again, there goes that situational awareness aspect of it. She's just kind of head down in her phone, not paying much attention. And so at that point, there's not much that she can do. But in this particular case, you had her who had a gun already out and ready to go. And then that speaks to another thing. It's when we're civilians out here carrying firearms, for us, time is of the essence. And so when you make a lot of these laws, for instance, like safe storage laws, so forth and so on, what it does is it puts us at a marked disadvantage as regular citizens because the robbers and the criminals know exactly what they're about to do. They're about to engage and commit a crime. They have the upper hand. We have to respond to the criminals. And since we have to respond to the criminals, time, 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 time is our most valuable asset. That's why we argue be situationally aware. The situation awareness just gives you the time you need to be able to make a decision on how you want to defend yourself. And so when you tell people you have to keep your guns completely locked up and stored somewhere and hard to get to because you want, want it hard to get to for criminals, well, understand that also means it makes it hard for the people who have the guns in the first place to protect themselves for them to get to the gun efficiently to protect themselves. That's why the moment she spotted danger, she pulled out a gun. Now, fortunately, in this particular situation, she was in a position to do that with any with any retribution or recourse, like doing that in the middle of a crowded area probably wouldn't be the smartest thing to do. But in this particular situation, she had the means, the situation allowed her to do that. And so we got to remember when we're trying to pass certain laws or when we want to support certain laws on the surface, they may seem like they make a lot of sense, but what are the unintended consequences? And that's what we need to ask ourselves here because it's pointless to have a gun if you can't get to it in time to defend yourself with. And once I once I heard, because it was so quiet, I heard them stumping down the stairs. That's how quiet it was. It sounded like they were stumping, like jumping down the stairs. That's why I screamed like, I said, I said, I said. She says that the woman in the green hoodie running towards her also had a gun. When she came running, I, she pointed her gun at me and I just started shooting. <laughs> The two suspects then made a beeline back down the stairs. She when when I started shooting, she shot, but I guess I hit her, and that's when she was stumbling to get back up and try to shoot from behind. So I want you to pay attention to something. I want you to try to count the number of gunshots you actually hear in this video. And what you'll realize is I think it was like over 10 or 12 rounds that were shot in this particular video. And again, this is an example of why I don't like magazine capacities. I don't. I don't like limitations on magazine capacities. Let's say in this situation, she had a magazine capacity of 10 rounds, 10. At least 10 shots were shot here, at least from her, 10 shots. So now at that point, that means that she has no more rounds in her gun. So let's say in this particular situation, let's say that criminals actually knew you live in a state where you can only have 10 rounds in your gun. And now you don't have any more bullets and they decide to turn around and come back and try to finish off the attack. At that point, she's stuck. She has no way to defend herself because she has no more ammo in her gun. That's the thing that we have to think about when we talk about laws, man. Like 10 round magazine limitation. Some of you uh, suggested seven rounds. Oh, miss me with that. We don't know the situation that you're going to find yourself in. A lot of people like to go into their mental mindset and come up with these scenarios that they think is the only way that you're going to be attacked with the firearm. You're going to think, oh, I'm at home. I only take a shotgun, shoot it in the air and they take off running. It's just, it's nonsense. In this particular case, she thinks she thought she was going to have to shoot more than 10 rounds in this particular situation in order to defend her life? No. 
And that's another thing too that we have to do is accept the realities of what it means to be in a like in a self-defense situation. I hear a lot of people all the time when certain states talk about passing concealed carry laws, they're like, oh, it's gonna turn into shootouts in the street. Or if more people had guns in this situation, when somebody came in shooting, it would turn into a shootout. Once bullets start flying, once somebody presents a gun, it's already a shootout. It can't get be, it can't become more of a shootout than it already is. So at that point, the best thing you want to do is Shoot as much as you need to do to make the situation stop. You don't shoot to kill. You don't shoot to injure. You shoot to make whatever the threat is doing stop. That's it. If it results in them dying or results in them getting hurt, that's beside the point. The point is this person is trying to take my life. I need to do whatever I need to do and shoot as many rounds as I need to shoot to make them stop I'm trying to do that. And that's where you get volume of fire. I think in this situation, the dynamics may have been a little different. Let's say she only shot one round, maybe only two. She shot multiple. She shot a volume of fire, which caused the actual criminals to turn the tables on them. They weren't expecting that. They definitely weren't expecting to have 10 hollow points getting thrown in their direction. So at that point, what it does is it throws them off base. And now you are at the advantage. You see it clear as day in the video. It tains, turns the table and now you are in a position of power. That's what self-defense is about, is having the ability, even though you start off on the weaker side of the situation, you can turn the tables and end up on the stronger side of it because you had a firearm to defend yourself. A firearm that wasn't artificially limited, just stupid, arbitrary, obnoxious number. Here's a view from another ring camera. Do you know where you shot her? Um, I saw her kind of stumbling down the steps. Yes, I believe it was in her left leg. The way that they ran up on me i really think that they were trying to kill me and that's another thing that i want to point out is this idea of shoot him in the leg shoot him in the leg you don't have to shoot kill shoot him in the leg well the problem with that as you can see here is this woman got shot in her leg and she was still able to get up and take off running shooting people in the leg doesn't automatically stop them from doing what they're doing and the fact that she got shot in the leg was just happen chance i don't think she was aiming to shoot her at a leg she was just aiming to shoot at the thing that was considered a threat and it happened to hit her in the leg. And that's another thing. Eight, nine, 10, 11 rounds. How many actually hit her? One, one. That, that is how crazy the dynamic of a self-defense situation is. You can't think that, sit back and think to yourself, oh, it's gonna go exactly like A, then B, then C, then D. No, it's wild, it's fast, it's dangerous. Like, and so you may not have the time to sit there and place well thought out shots at whatever is attacking you. So keep that in mind when you start to consider what type of gun you have, what type of sights you use. All of those things start to play a factor into your ability to use that firearm to the maximum effectiveness when you're in a situation where you have to defend yourself. This is Damika Malcolm, the woman Alexander says shot her. She's now facing a number of charges, including felony aggravated assault, armed robbery, and firearms charges. You don't know Damika Malcolm. I don't name. know them. I don't know them from a can of paint. Alexander is in the beauty industry and runs a successful wig company. She says that she believes somebody may have had a hit on her. This wasn't a robbery. I think it was a hit on me. So I'm just going to leave you with this. At the end of the day, you, you don't really know who is after you. I'm not saying that you need to spend the entirety of your life looking over your shoulder, making sure no one's out to get you. But don't by any stretch of the imagination think that you can never become a potential victim. Because there are a lot of people walking around this earth that have found themselves in a situation that never thought it could possibly happen. It doesn't matter if you're the coolest person on the planet. Somebody don't like you. That's just the way the world works. And sometimes some people don't like you so much that they're willing to send people to try to kill you. Now, in this particular situation, like I said, she was in a position, she had the situational awareness and the tool available at her disposal to use it to defend herself in this situation. And that's, a, that's essentially all that carrying a firearm is. It's just having it so that if something does arise, you're prepared to deal with it. It's nothing to carry a firearm. I say this all the time. It's no different to carrying your phone, your wallet, your keys, all of that stuff. Take it, put it on, carry it in a holster, carry it on you, and you're good to go. That That's it. And you just go about your life. You don't go about your life looking around every corner trying to figure out who's trying to get you. I'm not saying you need to go around life carrying a gun and then looking around every corner and automatically thinking every single person is out there to get you. However, whenever your senses do tell you something's off, pay attention to them. Just pay attention to them because that could be the very thing that ends up saving your life. And then if you have a firearm, now you have a tool that you can utilize to maximize your ability to save your life. And that's what carrying a gun is all about.
It's, it's, it's not just the tool in and of itself. It's a mindset. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of being. And as long as you take that seriously and you, and you do it safely, I don't see why this should be a problem for anybody in our government. They shouldn't have any problem with this whatsoever. Their main focus should be focused on criminals, not focus on how to make owning a firearm harder for citizens in order to stop criminals. That makes no sense. Stop doing that. So as you can see here, she was in a position to do what she needed to do, and I'm grateful she was able to do it. And then for those of you out there who do carry a firearm, it's important that you understand that it just doesn't stop necessarily after you defend yourself. You could find yourself in a situation where now you're possibly being sued, and if, or there's some question towards the legality of your actual shoot. And in that situation, the last thing you want to be doing is wondering, who can I call to help me to fight this case? Or where am I going to get the money to fight this case? And that's why I always suggest people who do carry firearms and even people who don't carry firearms and just simply have guns at home or just utilize some type of weapon to defend themselves in some manner. Get a membership like USCCA. USCCA is a holistic approach to the idea of self-defense and making sure you're prepared and covered above and beyond just simply having the gun. It encompasses the training component. It gives you the knowledge. It gives you access to attorneys. It gives you access to funds to fight a particular case if, if it happens to be that you do get sued or have to get take or have to take something to trial. You don't want to have to deal with the added stress of that plus the stress that comes with actually defending yourself in the first place. So if you're interested in learning more information about USCCA, I'm going to put a link in the description section of this video. You know, we talk a lot about empowerment in this country, except for when it comes to the Second Amendment. However, I can't think of anything more empowering than having the most effective tool to protect you and your family. So help me spread this message by liking and sharing this video with everyone you know. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment because the Second Amendment, when it said militia, it wasn't talking about the government. It was talking about you. Also, if you want to know where to find the I'm the Militia shirt and merchandise, click the I'm the Militia link in the description section of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, make sure you hit that bell symbol.